Hello, and welcome to the Desert Lady Diaries podcast, a weekly conversation with women who found their home in the Mojave Desert. I'm Dawn Davis, and this is episode number 30. If you're a first-time listener, welcome. And if you're a returning listener, thank you so much for coming back. If you're looking for more information about the podcast, past guests, want to catch up on previous episodes, or just want to drop me a line, it's all at the website DesertLadyDiaries.com. We're also on Facebook and Instagram at Desert Lady Diaries. This week, Jasmine Schaefer talks about growing up in the desert, specifically in Wonder Valley, and the changes she's seen in this desert community. Welcome back to Desert Lady Diaries. Today, my guest is Jasmine Schaefer. She's a desert native and loves the tranquility it has to offer. Spending most of her time here performing in theaters in the surrounding areas, as well as soaking up nature at every turn, the desert will always be her home. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. I usually start the podcast off with, how long have you been a permanent resident of the (laughs) desert? And I guess it would be safe to say... Just over 20 years. Yes. Yeah. 20, 24 years to oh, be exact. okay. I don't yes. really like to ask people's age unless they volunteer. So your first encounter with the desert was being born here. Being born, yeah. Right. I, was, I was born in Indio, and this is my parents moved from Orange County because they didn't like the way the city life was changing and they were having more kids. And so they came out to move to the Mesa and they're like, okay, this is, this is where we're going to stay. So I've been here ever since. So you grew up here and went to school here. Yeah. What was that like? Like, how many kids would you say were in your class? Oh, my graduating class was mm-hmm. about 110 people. Okay. So pretty small for, compared to, you know, a lot of high schools. It was really cool because going to smaller schools, we really were, like, tight-knit. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you, you graduate with the same people you went to kindergarten with. And granted, there are a lot of military kids in and out, but... I mean, the core, my core group of friends were about the same for the entire duration of school, which was really nice. And there's so much, um, oh, what's the word? There's just so many people who come to the desert and just out here. And so it was really cool to have that diversity. That's the word I was looking for. There you go. Yeah. (laughs) The diversity at our school. So it was, it was really nice. I like going to a smaller school. Yeah. I think my graduating class was like 360. Oh, okay. And I've known people that have had Mm -hmm. classes much more than that. Yeah. And I think, how do you even know everybody? Yeah. You know, and you can't know everybody. Yeah. It makes for a much different experience. Yeah. I mean, like they were like the popular kids, but you were still friends with them. You might not always hang out with them, but they were nice. And it was, you know, so I wouldn't change my high school or schooling experience. No, not at all. So as a native, do you spend much time in the national park? I haven't as much as I want to in recent in the last couple years, but I have like when I was younger, we used to go every single field trip was always to the national park and I'd go with my mom and dad. And I grew up mostly in Wonder Valley, which isn't the national park, but Mm-mm. it's big open desert. So, right, you know, exactly. I spent a lot of time out there and, but I love the national park. It's, it's beautiful. And I've gotten to love the desert a lot more now that I'm even older, like even though I'm not that old, but <laughs> when I was in like my teens, my, you know, I, getting ready to graduate high school, I was like, oh, I just want to leave. But the desert is so beautiful. I see it for what it is now. Right. Yeah. Well, you know Bianca. Yes. And when she was on mm-hmm. earlier in the podcast, we had a similar conversation about, you yeah. know, so growing up here, did you ever just think, I'm just going to leave this place and never come back? Did you ever have that? Yeah. Oh, always. I was like, why? Like, I would I would get mad at my parents and be like, "They, you lived right next to Disneyland. Why did you come out here? <laughs> I'm like, I've never been to Disneyland. I've never been to a big mall. I was like, why would you do that? (laughs) And now that I'm older, I'm no, thank you for that. Because this is, it really is a community. I know it's grown even just since I've been here for the last 20 plus years. But I mean, it's nice to be a part of a smaller community and be able to to go to a store and run into, you know, six or seven people that you know, which isn't right. always, you don't always want that. But I mean, it is, it's kind of nice. Right, exactly. So, you can just catch up and see what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. When you were growing up, what kind of things were you doing as a school age child to <laughs> occupy your time? As a desert kid? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah. Lots of exploring the desert, going to abandoned houses, which I don't condone, oh. you know, safety. <laughs> right. But we would always go to abandoned houses was the biggest thing, like with my sisters, because I mean, when you live out in Wonder Valley, right? I mean, you have a house and then, you know, about a mile away, it's just three more abandoned houses. And then you finally have a neighbor. So, I mean, we just go and uh, play on the concrete that's from an old house that's all opened up and everything's been broken out and play hopscotch, and jump rope. And mm. I mean, definitely spend a lot more time outside. That's for sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say you spent most of your time growing up then with your fa- your 
siblings were siblings. your friends yeah, because definitely. people are far away. Far, especially living out in Wonder Valley, which I mean, I wasn't really happy about because I was like, none of my friends are out here. And, but I mean, I'm really close to my family anyway. So I mean, that was that was nice. And I had a couple of friends that were kind of close, but growing up out in Wonder Valley, it was, it was quiet. It was, which was really peaceful. You could go sit on your porch and look up at the stars and then not have, hear a car for 15, 20 minutes. It yeah. was really nice. I know. I drive up there every once in a while on a Sunday morning to have breakfast at the Palms. Oh yeah. My dad used to play there all the time. With oh really? Dad. Oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. And you know, you get out of your car. Yep. And there's nothing. Nope. And it's amazing. Yeah. It's it's really nice and I definitely appreciate it a lot more now. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Yeah. Let's talk about you said you've seen a lot of changes. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about what kind of changes you've seen. What was Wonder Valley, 29 Palms, and this Morongo Basin like when you were growing up? Mm-hmm. And you get, did you get to see much of it at any one time? Yeah. And then, you know, compared to now, what are some things that really well, you notice? Definitely, I mean, the especially in Yucca Valley, because Yucca Valley, especially living in Wonder Valley, going to Yucca, mm-hmm. like, it would be a whole day ordeal. Like, it, we would plan because, you know, it takes so long. It'd take, you know, an hour plus just to get to Yucca Valley. And- oh, wait, so tell me about the road. Oh, my God the washboard roads <laughs> so like highway 62 was it yeah, just one lane just each way one lane each way we go up our washboard dirt road and get to the highway and drive the highway the ups and downs and ups and downs which you know i've those roads will forever be my childhood and um just take it for you know an hour and a half maybe even two hours i think just to get to walmart which oh was the gosh. center of yucca valley to go, you know, grocery shopping or school shopping, like go to the Kmart, which we don't have anymore. Well, and the, right, and the Walmart wasn't where it is now. No, it's where the Tractor Supply and the Ninety Nine Cent Store is. That oh, was okay. that was the hubbub of town. Was that was Walmart? Okay. And I mean, I didn't even grow up in Yucca, so it wasn't until I got older that I went went to Yucca a lot more. But just going, I just remember being young and going to Yucca was like a, like a trip. It was a treat, mm-hmm. which is. So weird to think about now, <laughs> considering I live there, and I'm like, ugh, yucka. Okay. <laughs> it was, yeah, and just the stores and stuff that have come, because I mm. feel like even, I mean, things are expanding, and, you know, they're bringing in more business, and we definitely have more people, like, moving to Joshua Tree and moving to Yucca and, like, experiencing the nice, quiet life, but it was definitely mm. more quiet whenever I was growing up. Sure. I'm trying to remember. I know some of the grocery stores that we had, like, that we went to in 29, those aren't there anymore. The Stumps bar that my dad used to play at all the time. And I I remember going with my mom to, like, pick him up or, like, to drop off his, his equipment and being there. And that's, you know, gone. And just things, just things have expanded and changed. Mm. Maybe not a lot, but, I mean, even just in the last 20 years. There's definitely a lot more people. Right. That's for sure. Yeah. When you were in school, were there any kids that were, like, their dads were at the Marine base? I grew up with so many military friends Mm. who were there for, you know, a year, a year and a half, or even six months, and then they were gone, which, I mean, was, it was cool. I'm thankful that my life wasn't that, wasn't moving around, which, I mean, isn't bad, but I'm thankful that I got to grow up in the same Well, it's hard, I think, just on people in general to move, adults to move from one place to another, but you've got kids, and maybe they're shy, and that becomes their life, is just trying to make new friends over and over Over and over again. it's like, what's the point? We're just going to move in five or six months or years. Do you keep in touch with any of those people, maybe Um, from high school or anything? Yeah, I do have a few, thankfully because of social media, Mm -hmm. (laughs) um, I do have a few friends from high school that left freshman sophomore year that I found and we've reconnected a little bit with which and it's really nice to see what they're doing with their life and to see how Mm. things have changed for them and Mm. it's really nice so thank you social media (laughs) (laughs) right I know there's some people you want to reconnect with and Mm -hmm. some people you think gosh I'll never see them again or they come into your mind and you go let me look and see if they're on Facebook yeah exactly nine times out of ten you can track them down (laughs) my one of my best friends from kindergarten she found me on MySpace when I was like a it was right before my freshman year, and she moved third after third grade and she, to, like, Oklahoma. And I was like, we'll see each other. Never saw each other again. She mm. found me on my, MySpace, and I was like, oh, my gosh. And now, we, you know, we talk regularly, and I'm like, that's so cool. That is really cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. What were some of the kind of activities that you took part in? I mean, I would imagine it was just like any other school. They have different clubs and activities yeah. and sports and all that kind of stuff. I did softball for a little while, mm-hmm. which earned me a chipped front tooth. That oh, was, yeah. yay. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. I was always a part of the 
drama or theater clubs even when I I mean growing up I was a super super shy child I was extremely shy my older sister was six years older than me and she did theater and drama so and Mm. we went to the same school so I'd go to school and they'd be like oh you're Treva's sister Mm. okay come here like let's do this whatever and expecting (laughs) me to be like her and I'm just like no please don't talk to me (laughs) so um don't look at me (laughs) exactly so I was always a part of those clubs but I always kind of like stood in the background and I was just like, I'll write down the notes for the minutes or I know it's okay. You guys go, go do that. I was a part of those. I uh, volunteered after school with some of the special ed kids. I remember doing that whenever I went to Palm Vista, which that was, I remember that that was fun. But honestly, other than that, I didn't do too many activities until mm-hmm. I got into like junior high, high school. Cause I was really just like, I don't want to do anything. Don't make me do anything. Mm-hmm. So, well, that's, and I'm surprised to hear that because we know each other through being in theater yeah. and you're right out there. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's so how really do you, what do you think changed? It really didn't happen until I was like 13 or 14. And even probably after that, my sister kind of forced me to audition at community theater. And it was for a high school musical <laughs> because everybody was obsessed with it. And she's like, you're just going to go do it. And, you know, if you get in, you get in. Like, you have a good voice. Just go do it. And so I did it and I got in and I was like, okay, cool. And I was still super shy and kind of like, okay, I'll stand over here. You want me to do what? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> and, um. Being You're around. very directable. Yes, <laughs> exactly. I take direction well exactly. and I don't argue. So, right. you know, that was a good start. <laughs> it, it still wasn't for like another year or two where I actually finally got comfortable, but it was like being in a community theater and being around people who were there like to do the same job and who mm. were there because they want to be and they're really there to like help you have fun and just create that family and stuff and Mm. I slowly started coming out of my shell and becoming more of myself and being like oh no it's okay like you can go talk to people you can go do this Mm -hmm. and honestly I commend community theater for making me the person I am today hands down I honestly was so shy I mean Even in school, I didn't mind getting up in front of classes and talking, but that was because I was kind of a control freak and I like to like be like, this is, this is what, you know, (laughs) I feel you. (laughs) So, but whenever it came to hanging out with people or whatever, I'd just go sit by myself and I know it sounds sad, but I mean, I did it to myself, whatever. (laughs) But a community theater really, it helped me a lot. Mm, Yeah. Well, it's interesting that you would say that, that when you were in a group of people, you'd kind of withdraw from the crowd. I think Mm -hmm. that it's important awareness. Yeah. Because I have a similar thing when I go out. Mm -hmm. If I'm not prepared Mm -hmm. for the noise or the number of people, I sometimes get a little overwhelmed. Right. My sensitivities kick in and somebody could be right in front of me talking to me, but Mm -hmm. I hear the other 50 conversations that are going on in the room. Mm -hmm. And it's very, I wouldn't say it's stressful, but it's it's overwhelming. Yeah, definitely. And I have to feel like I can, I need to step back and then I kind of, you know, maybe I'll scan the crowd and see Mm -hmm. if somebody else has kind of pulled themselves back and I know there's my person. (laughs) Right, exactly. (laughs) They're feeling what I'm feeling. Yeah. Let me go over because I'm better having a, a, maybe a one-on-one conversation Mm -hmm. than I am sitting at a table of 10 people at a dinner thing that right. just, yep. it's madness to mm-hmm. me. Right. Unless we're all talking and having the same conversation. Right. But when there's three or four different conversations going on at okay. once, I'm out. Yeah. You're like, nope. I just shut down. I'm just going to eat. Yep. <laughs> You're like, I'll just, I'll just sit here and eat. I'm just going to eat. So that's good awareness. And I yeah. think, you know, a lot of people don't recognize or, or maybe their either friends or their family or their spouse don't recognize mm-hmm. that that's just something that's in them and they they can't help it it just is so being aware of that is Mm -hmm. really good yeah yeah at such a young age (laughs) so besides driving down and doing theater down Mm -hmm. in the low desert because you're doing that quite a bit now at palm canyon yes how many shows have you done there now oh oh six six oh my goodness six i want to say and that's in what 18 months so two years yeah wow yeah last year was back to back back to back to back to back right theater, just one after another rehearsals on top of other you know while you're doing other shows and right it was hard <laughs> yeah but it was fun yeah. that's great so yeah. what are some of the shows that you have done down there my very first show was footloose mm-hmm. and then we did music man meet me in st louis mm-hmm. uh let's see i'm trying to remember did they do the rock and roll one the um... oh rock of ages yeah yeah, yeah that was okay. my favorite one rock of Age. that was so much fun <laughs> that's um, the music that's the soundtrack of my life <laughs> growing it was, up <laughs> it was that was probably my favorite show i've ever been in was rock of ages oh nice that was so much fun what did we just do we just did mame okay in the heights I feel like I'm missing some. That's a lot. Yeah. And then you did stuff up here. Yeah. We, at the high desert. Yep. You did uh, Godspell. Godspell. Right. Little Shop of Horrors. Right. 
Yeah. You are a theater machine. I know. I've decided to take more of a break this year because mm-hmm. it was so just on top of each other, and which is the nice. I mean, mm-hmm. getting a little bored here and there, but that's yeah. okay. Yeah, you'll pick up something. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So in the process of joining community theater mm-hmm. and then moving into semi-professional, I would yeah, say, yeah. is Palm Canyon, mm-hmm. have you taken any music lessons, singing lessons, anything like the acting lessons? Um, Have you done any of that? In school, I was in select choir, which mm-hmm. was like the the group that the music teacher chose that was, like, okay, you're more advanced. Let's, you know, mm-hmm. it was a competition choir. And so I did that. And then after that, for a long time, I was just kind of going on whim, just like singing, just learning. And then I started to take voice lessons with Annalisa Pilecki, who is wonderful. Those are the only lessons I have ever taken, whether Mm -hmm. coming from acting or singing or... Right. Yeah. Well, that's pretty amazing because people train for years and don't have half of the experiences that you have. Right. So, and I think that that's an advantage Mm -hmm. of being in a small community is that you have those opportunities and you mm-hmm. have a lot more of them, obviously, because yeah. you're taking advantage of them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I agree. And I mean, in some s- sense, it's having a smaller community is like, because once I moved to like doing stuff at PCT, I felt like I grew just in that year of acting and singing and dancing, which I'm not much of a dancer, but just because they have more like professional, like people who have who've been doing it for years and years and dancers who have been, you know, dancing for literally years and who went to school with it. And we have some of those up here, even just moving down there and getting to experience people who have more experience was really, really nice. And I'm so thankful for the stuff that I did, like when I was younger in community theater Mm -hmm. out here, because it was really a stepping stone into just growing. So in one hand, I'm like, oh, well, I could have done so much more and younger, like if I had more opportunities and there was just more stuff out here. But also I'm older. I... I'm more patient because there's no guarantees that when I was younger, I'd be like, yeah, I guess I'll do an hour and a half voice lesson. That's (laughs) cool, I guess. It's like the classic, it's time for your piano lesson. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I mean, even now I've talked to my parents and I'm like, why didn't you force me to do stuff like piano or dance? And they're like, you didn't want to. We weren't going to force you. And I'm like... Well, okay. <laughs> I can't argue with that now. No, you can't. <laughs> so. I hear you talking about siblings. Mm-hmm. Where are you in birth order? I am middle child. Oh. Yep, three girls, middle child. Are your sisters still here in the um, area? They are, actually. Mm-hmm. My older sister, uh, she moved down to San Diego for a little while and kind of started a life there. Mm-hmm. And then she slowly made her way back here. She misses San Diego. And well, it's a great atmosphere. I mean, it's it beautiful it's there. It's beautiful. She's like, the desert is my home. And my little sister my younger sister is here still too Mm -hmm. so i mean is she still in school in high school Um, no she's in college she's taking online courses right now so yeah because she's she's a year younger than me and my older sister is six years older than me so what would you say to someone who had never lived in the desert Mm -hmm. and they come they maybe meet you somewhere and they start asking you questions about living here what are some of the things that you would tell them i would tell them that it's a, a beauty that you're not used to because even growing up here, I took it for granted. I, I never, I was all like, it's just rocks and dirt. Like it's not, <laughs> it's not, but then you go to the national park and you see these big rocks these and dirt, big rocks and dirt <laughs> that, I mean, that have been there for years and centuries. And it's just like, wow, okay, this is, this is different, but this is, this is beautiful and it's Mm. the community of people like especially joshua tree the vibiness i don't know if i should but you know like there's just there there's a different vibe to the desert Mm -hmm. like there is and it is a sense of peacefulness and tranquility and the fact that you can drive 5 10 15 minutes in any direction and find yourself a place to just sit and to just watch the world go by and just Mm. take a minute for yourself that's the thing that I like the most is that it's not so fast paced and busy and because I like the next person I enjoy going to a city and enjoying Mm -hmm. the city for a day or two and be like oh yeah cool but then I come back here and I'm just like thank goodness it's so pretty and Mm. it's so beautiful and it's quiet and it's peaceful and I honestly wouldn't give it up for the world Mm. at all. You were alluding to Joshua Tree and the vibiness (laughs) so (laughs) talk to me about like you're growing up in Mm -hmm. 29 Wonder Valley Mm -hmm. and I don't know you're 13 years old what are the impressions of 29 Joshua Tree Yucca Valley, Morongo. Mm-hmm. Can you talk, you know what I mean? Yeah. 29, it was the military town, which mm-hmm. it 
which it always was. There's what people would say military brats, just military kids, and that's what it was. That's what 29 Palms was when I was growing up. Mm-hmm. Joshua Tree, from what I knew, because I didn't spend that much time here, was mm-hmm. that it was for hippies. Mm-hmm. Was that this is this is just where the hippies they are and that was fine. I mean, my parents both grew up in the '60s, and mm-hmm. I was like, oh, that's cool, whatever. But Joshua Tree is really just a drive-through. I never spent a lot of time in Joshua Tree growing mm-hmm. up, and then Yucca, Yucca was like the big honcho. That's where the Walmart and the Kmart is. That's where like they have everything. They have everything. <laughs> so Yucca was like. I don't know, like the Palm Springs to like, to me as a kid, I was mm. like, I want to go to Yucca, you know, I want to live in Yucca. And my, my thoughts about everything have changed now that I'm older. <laughs> I was like, just going to say, see what you did to yourself? You said, I want to live in Yucca. And where are you living now? Yucca. Yucca. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, okay. And then Morongo Valley, I didn't even know that existed. Oh, like, wow. honestly, I didn't, I think the very first time I went down the hill, which, you know, is what we, we you know, go down to Palm right. Springs, I was 15. That was the very first time that I remember, because I went to the mall, and everybody's like, you had such a sheltered life, and I was like, yeah, but that's okay. <laughs> I mean, and when I was younger, I was like, I know, I don't go to the mall or do anything, and now I'm just like, it's okay, whatever. Right. <laughs> it's not that great. But yeah, I didn't even know what Morongo Valley was. I mean, I heard it, but I was mm-hmm. just like that's cool that's a place and it almost seems to me still i mean maybe that's changing a little bit that that's also a pass through kind of place you know from the from the 10 from the mm -hmm. freeway coming into where the park is and all that stuff yeah Um, but there are artist colonies there and the covington park Mm -hmm. is there so there's a lot of cool stuff that's in there and gross cabin theater yes which i've actually never gone to i i just was there two three weeks ago Mm -hmm. they had some auditions oh so i went and auditioned oh how cool so we'll see what happens yeah i've heard they put out some good theater yeah and i haven't seen a show there Mm because it's very hard to get tickets because it is super super small. small yeah yeah, so hopefully they expand and, you know, yeah, share that with... But, exactly. I mean, there's a, there's a quaintness to it, which is nice. There is, yeah. There really is. I finally went into that... Um monument bar and grill oh, that's really? there by yeah. the cactus mart yeah it was small but it was really cool i went in on a sunday mm-hmm. and i walked in and you walk in and the right side is the bar and the left side i guess is where they would normally have tables for people to eat at right well this particular sunday i walked in they had canvases set up oh, blank uh-huh. canvases and they were having this painting i wouldn't necessarily call it a painting party but i guess mm-hmm. that's what it was you know wow. so you sign up pay your 20 or 25 dollars right. get your drink at the bar and then she was leading everybody through they were all painting she was giving them oh, the same cool. instructions right so i'm kind of wishing i had hung around just to see like the finished product because right. then you get to see each person's different interpretation of what right. her instructions were for what oh, to paint so cool. but they were doing that out there yeah, yeah. see i didn't so, even know they did that stuff i didn't either until i just walked right. in yeah and that's the other great thing about here even once i moved to yucca I mean, I was like, what are all these shops that I've never... Art FX and Tamira's and all that. I was like, mm-hmm. I have never in my entire life been here. But there's so many cool little shops to mm-hmm. just go to, which is... It's different from City Life. City Life has those big shops. But here you have these stores with people who live here. Like, their art and their right. stuff. And it's it's really cool. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah. I really like that. And I think we're fortunate that we're getting a little more of that coming mm-hmm. up. Like Mohawk Market. Um, yeah. Sometimes they have that and they have a gallery inside. Mm-hmm. So it's really cool, and the music scene is amazing. Oh my goodness, I know. Yeah, Yeah. I say to some people, I said it's so hard sometimes to know even where to go, because nine times out of ten, whatever's happening that night, you know someone who is participating or who is the entertainment. Yep, yep. (laughs) And it's like, how do I choose (laughs) what to do? Exactly, yeah. (laughs) So in your spare time... Mm Is there anything that you're currently reading or are you uh, Netflix binging on something or that you would want to recommend to folks that um, are listening? The current thing I'm, I am, a, I wouldn't say obsessed. That's, that's, that's a little strong, but um, I'm really enjoying Black Mirror on Netflix, oh. which is like a modern day Twilight Zone is the way that I've heard it described because every episode is different and there's a big plot twist or something that you don't see coming in every single episode and you really honestly have no clue what's going to happen which is really nice because mm-hmm. there's so many th- times you watch something you're like yep this happens he's the killer right, oh, so he's predictable. the stepdad and mm-hmm. so it's really nice and it's it's great and of course it comes from the UK so they've right. got all the good television <laughs> exactly yes they <laughs> so, do but that I would definitely recommend that if yeah. you're into sci-fi or like mm-hmm. fantasy thriller it's, right. it's really great okay yeah. cool yeah we talked about the peace and the tranquility of the desert for people yes. who are thinking about maybe moving out here. Mm-hmm. Are there any 
things that you would warn them about to be aware of? The desert life that does not have any bounds because we are literally living in their homes. <laughs> so most of my encounters with the animals of the desert mm. were whenever I lived out in Wonder Valley. Okay. And I remember one day, I've encountered a lot of snakes with my family, mm. but I remember one day my dad had picked me up from a bus stop when I was living out in Wonder Valley. I think I was in kindergarten or first grade, and it was kind of overcast. And we were walking home, and it was, I don't know, quarter of a mile to my house, but, you know, not a big deal walking down the dirt road. Right. And there was this big fence of somebody's house, and it was just a big wooden fence, and we were just walking and there's this berm and then there's just this yellow snake there oh. but it wasn't a typical desert yellow snake it was a boa constrictor <gasps> a big yellow boa constrictor oh my gosh yeah and it was just laying there do you think somebody had it as a pet and yeah, it got that's loose what my or dad something said. he was like that has to be somebody's pet that <sighs> got loose because and it was just laying there trying to soak up the tiny bit of sun right. and me being five or six years old, I went up to it and I wanted to poke it with a, with a stick. And of course my dad stopped me. <laughs> right. But um, I remember looking at it and being so close to it. And I was like, this is so cool. My dad's like, yeah, that's somebody's pet. Let's, let's go. Let's, mm-hmm. you know, let's leave it where it is. But that was the weirdest. There was multiple times that my dad, there was sidewinders mm. and rattlesnakes. And I mean, rosy boas. There was this one rosy boa that used, we called it our pet rosy technically, because <laughs> we had one of those little tiny swimming pools that we would go into and it would just come and lay up against the pool for the oh, coolness. Yeah. And it wouldn't do anything. It was a rosy boa. It just mm-hmm. laid, you know, laid there and occasionally it would slither up and like look into the pool while we were in there. Yeah. And now that I'm older, I'm like, that would scare the like crap out of me. <laughs> but when I was younger, I was like, oh, Rosie, oh, look. look at the snake. Look at the pretty snake. Desert life, for sure. It's, it's yeah. a lot different than mm-hmm. being in the city and being like, oh, look, there's a rabbit or, you know, a, right. a whatever. But I mean, coyotes everywhere. Yeah, I've seen Always. them. I've been in, in here and looking out my front window. Mm-hmm. And I'll go, I'll look and I'll go, oh, there's a dog running through there. It's kind of mangy. Oh, that's a coyote. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I have experienced a snake. I had a snake in my apartment like two months after I moved in. Oh. Yeah. That, that was, was exciting. <laughs> I was able to get him out. Oh, good. You know, everybody was fine. Right. But it's just one of those things that you have to remember. Like you said, mm-hmm. we're living in their home and yep, exactly. you just have to learn how to deal with it. Yep. Exactly. So, yeah. Great. Well, I really appreciate you coming and talking with Thank me today so about me growing up in Wonder Valley. <laughs> and yeah. um, probably sharing some things that people that are living here now and listening didn't even realize were yeah. happening at that right. time before yeah. they got here. Yeah. So thanks for sharing all that stuff. Thank I you appreciate so much. it. Thank You're welcome. You. Thanks so much for listening to the Desert Lady Diaries podcast. I want you to know how much I appreciate you taking the time to tune in. If there was something that enlightened or inspired you, let me know by sharing it with me and the other listeners on the Desert Lady Diaries Facebook page. Next week, I'm talking to Barbara Harris. She's a local historical interpreter who has researched Giant Rock and the Integratron for over 30 years. And if you're not receiving our weekly episode newsletter yet, you can sign up by sending an email to desertladydiaries at gmail.com. Or go to the website and click on the yellow weekly newsletter button in the upper right-hand corner. Thanks so much for listening.